today i am going to discuss with you domain assumptions of modes of cultural analysis so far i have tried to introduce you to different types of modes of cultural analysis in a very very preliminary introduction uh, today we are going to discuss domain assumptions of cultural analysis or theoretical foundations of cultural analysis and usable methodology and techniques which we use to study culture as a whole uh i would like to begin my lecture with a very popular quotations by michel foucault uh when somebody asked him as you know at the end of his academic career michel foucault devoted more time in giving lectures than in writing books and those lectures are available today in book form as well but uh, these are two different flavors of teaching writing a book and giving lectures uh, books are not written in the same way in which uh, lectures are given because when you are giving a lecture you are you know interacting with your audience primarily your students and junior colleagues sometimes the senior colleagues also attend a lecture but that is very rare in the global village uh, in late 20th century and early 21st century uh foucault was asked michel foucault was asked what is more important element of culture and then he gave this famous quotation and i am just quoting him in direct narration what is interesting is always interconnection not the primacy of this or that this is the quotation now i am making it a little more simpler for you by adding some words i have given you the quotation what is interesting it always interconnection not the primacy of this over that now what he is trying to say he is trying to say two things number 1 he is a time to say that you cannot uh, do post structural analysis of culture 
unless and until you are well versed in levi astrosian french structuralism this is the first point he is trying to make and what levi astros said what is crucial term what is crucial uh, levi astrosian term to understand this quotation of michel foucault determined from a structural anthropology and it says that words or elements or parts have no meaning words or parts or elements have no meaning independent of itself rather every word becomes meaningful only as part of the sentence Michel Foucault is just paraphrasing this Lévi-Straussian definition or a statement or a theoretical statement. Just paraphrasing that words have no independent meaning outside the sentence. He is saying now. I am reading the quotation again, and it will become uh, more simple and understandable to all of you. Foucault is saying that what is interesting in cultural studies or discourse analysis. This is my addition. What is interesting? This is Foucault. I am, you know, uh, adding few words so that it becomes clear to you. What is interesting, Foucault, I am adding in culture study or discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is the post-structural method developed by Michel Foucault. Now, uh, what is discourse analysis for Michel, Michel Foucault? Is deconstruction for Derrida. In other words, what is discourse analysis or deconstruction? These are techniques. These are post-structural techniques of doing. A structural analysis in Durkheimian school of culture analysis. Now, I am giving you the final view of Michel Foucault. What is interesting in cultural studies or discourse? analysis is always interconnections between the parts and not the primacy of this or that part is it clear to you i think it is not clear to you you are just listening not understanding i am giving you one example and then it will become clear to all of you take karl marx what karl marx says that the base is more important than the superstructure 
what Karl Marx said, infrastructure is more important than superstructure. And within base or infrastructure or mode of production, relations of productions are more important than forces of production. This is Karl Marx. Now Michel Foucault is reading Karl Marx. Althusser is reading Karl Marx by following a structural method of Levi-Strauss. And they are saying that what is interesting is the interconnections between infrastructure and superstructure or base of uh, superstructure. What is interesting or important is the interconnection between forces of production and relations of production. Uh, in other words, we should study interconnections between forces of production and relations of production or base or superstructure and should not indulge in determining which is more important and which is less important. Got it? Now, why Levi Strauss is said as the disciple of Emile Durkheim? Although, Durkheim was already dead when Levi Strauss started learning sociology. There is no direct physical contact between two intellectuals. Okay? Levi Strauss is influenced by Durkheim through. Marshall Moss and Bronisila Belinowski. Now, what in Durkheim attracted Levi Strauss? Durkheim had written, and I had a stress this point in my lectures on sociological thinkers that the sum total of parts is not equal to the whole. The sum total of parts is not equal to the whole. Now what is missing in the whole? Interconnections. Interconnection between parts. Only the sum total of parts is not equal to the whole. What is equal to the whole? The sum total of parts plus interconnection between the parts. Getting it or not getting it? Riya, Preeti, Asis. Can you give one example? I am giving you an example for you. For example, what is the whole at the moment? A class of modes of cultural analysis is the whole. Now what is the structure of modes of cultural analysis being discussed at the moment? The sum total of parts the number of students are attending 
and the number of teachers teaching. But this is not the whole, this is just some total of the whole. What is missing? Interconnections between the students and the teacher. And what is that? Anybody? The syllabus, the course outline. Unless and until we bring in the syllabus prepared by ADU and given to the School of Social Sciences and delegated to the Centre for the Study of Social Systems without bringing in the course outline, without bringing in the admission policy, without bringing in the exam policy, interconnections, the, the course cannot be understood. The course is not only the students listening and the teacher speaking. The sum total is not only the students listening and inter uh, acting with fellow students and the teacher. We have to bring in the invisible interconnections and that is the syllabus, the course outline, the JNU Act passed by the parliament. Got it? Now what is the interconnections for post structuralists like Michel Foucault? Is the grammar of culture for Levi Strauss. Now, what is grammar? A set of rules. Grammar is a set of rules which determine the place of subjects, objects, and verb. Now, I am speaking two sentences. The bus is full. The bus is full. Second, bus full hai. What is the difference? One is an English language sentence and the other is a Hindi language sentence. This is not sociological answer. This is common sensical answer. What is the sociological answer? In the first sentence, bus is full. The verb is located in the middle between the subject and the object. The structure of English language sentence is that verb will be located between the subject and the object. This is according to English grammar. And what is the second sentence? It is a Hindi sentence. Although <coughs> out of three, two words are in English. Bus is English. Full is also English. Only hai in Hindi. Therefore, in case you count the parts, out of three, two words are in English. But it is not an English sentence. It is not an English culture. It is Hindi culture, Hindustani culture, Indian culture. And what is the difference? That in Indian culture, the verb is located at the end. Are you getting the point? What is English culture? The verb is located in the middle. And in Hindi culture, in Indian culture, the verb is located at the end. Now what is verb in the language of thinkers of sociology? What is verb for Levi Strauss is called social action by Weber and Parsons.
Is it clear to you or not? Riya? Okay. What is social action? Social action is any action, according to Max Weber, which has got subjective meaning. What is verb? Verb is something in any language which connects subject that is social actor and the object that is social action. Is it clear now? Still not clear. Good. Sure. Sure that it is clear. Otherwise, I will give additional example. Okay. Therefore, what is this course about? This course modes of cultural analysis is an extension of sociological thinkers course which you have learnt in first semester. <coughs> Okay, and what is the domain assumption? What is domain assumption which is common between all the scholars who are doing cultural analysis? What is common between all cultural analysts? They believe in a few assumptions, a few statements, a few hypotheses. Please make a note first. This is the full definition of culture I am giving you for the first time. And this is my definition. Based on E.B. Tyler, Bronisila Melinowski, Emile Durkheim, Max Weber and many others. Therefore, I am synthesizing the concept of culture for this course. Please make a note. Number one, culture is the unique language. Culture is the unique language of human species. Culture is the unique language of human species, Oma, which differentiates which differentiates human species from other species among the species of animal kingdom. on planet earth full stop it is everywhere it is everywhere in human life in the global village and it includes the whole range of activities it includes the whole range of activities that define human life for example knowledge belief, art, morals, 
law, customs, media, fashion, material foundations, and technological innovations. of human life in kinship, micro and macro social structures, civil and military societies, nation states, a stratified market network and human civilization. I am repeating it again so that in case you have missed a certain points you can rewrite. Culture is the unique language of human species which differentiates human species from other species among the animal kingdom on planet earth. Full stop. It is everywhere in human life, in the global village and includes the whole range of activities that define human life. For example, knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, customs, media, fashion, material foundations, technological innovations, etc. etc. of human life in kinship, comma, micro and macro social structures, comma, civil and military societies, comma, nation hyphen states, comma, a stratified market network comma and human civilization. This is point first of domain assumptions. Second domain assumption, please make a note. Culture is not only a language. Culture is not only a language, rather it is also the social process, rather culture is also the social process of transferring or transmitting the language of the cultural whole I am repeating it again culture is Durkhimian sui generic social fact semicolon 
from one social from one generation to the next generation to the next generation within within the community of community inverted comma of Ferdinand Tony and will add from one space and time and will add from one space and time to another and the process of accommodation comma assimilation comma confrontation and competition both horizontally in the process of diffusionist exchange inverted comma and will add colonial or imperialist enterprise and will add colonial or imperialist enterprise of superimposing the culture of the empire or multinational corporations through war comma domination and propaganda have you written is it clear to all of you yes or no uh, in your graduation or first semester uh, usually in your graduation you are given the definition of culture by E.B. Tyler and that uh, definition of culture is still relevant but in an Uh, simplified or modified form. Therefore, I am giving you very simple explanation. What are two major domain assumptions of modes of cultural analysis? There are two domain assumptions. One, that culture is a language of human beings. Clear? Second domain assumption is that culture is also a social process. Culture is also a social process of socialization within a community.
that is transferring or transmitting the culture of the senior generation to the junior generation. But it is within simple communities, for example, among the tribes, among the caste groups. Okay. But in sociology, only the study of tribal communities and caste groups? No. Sociology tries to study human culture at the global level. And for this, the term process has been subdivided into three parts. Culture as a, uh, as a process includes three parts. Pahla, the first, the process of so socialization, the process of socialization. within traditional communities. Number two, the process of colonization by the mighty empires. Modernization is also a culture. Islamization is also a culture. Sanskritization is also a culture. Westernization is also a culture. Feminization is also a culture. What are these? These are superimposing or superimposition of the culture of the mighty, the elite, the ruling class the ruling country. Clear? Third, culture as a process also includes culture as a social process also include or includes what? Superimposition of artificial needs. Superimposition of artificial needs, necessities, and aspirations by big multinational corporations. Okay? Is it clear to you that culture as a process includes three things. Socialization, colonization, but it also includes advertisements, propaganda of the multinational company. This is the third point is from Karl Marx, Das Kapital or Capital Volume 1. What is the Marxist view? That in traditional economies, demand creates supply. In traditional economies, Demand creates supply. In other words, in traditional economy, in traditional economy, consumer is the king. In traditional economy, consumer is the king. And the industries, the businessmen, 
दे आर प्रोवाइडर्स ऑफ सर्विसेस प्रोवाइडर्स ऑफ सर्विसेस they are not kings they are servants in traditional economy consumers are the kings and providers of those demands are servants they are secondary are you getting the point but what happens in modern economy capitalist economy according to karl marx the capitalist economy is different from traditional economy because in modern economy capitalist economy capitalist are the king capitalist are the king industrialist are the king and the consumers are they are slaves modern economy does not function on the basis of demand rather the industrialists manufacture products industries manufacture products and through advertisements and propaganda through advertisements and propaganda they create artificial needs and it is called fashion are you getting the point are you getting the point therefore therefore a marxist socialist his name is theodore adorno he had written a book culture industry culture industry this book was written in 1930 more or less during the time hitler was ruling over germany and when karl marx died in 1883 now after reading this book culture industry which is part of a bigger book called dialectics of enlightenment written by two authors max horkheimer and theodor adorno culture industry is a small section of dialectics of enlightenment but this portion was written independently by theodor adorno and today the part that is culture industry is a more popular book than the original fat book written by two authors namely dialectics of enlightenment clear now in 1950 20 years after publication of culture industry there is an american sociologist his name is c right mills how to write uh, right c c for calcutta okay right w not r w r i g h t right mills m i 
डबल एन एस सी राइट मिल्स हैड एक्सटेंडेड the argument of marx and adorno in his two books first the power elite the power elite and second book is more popular sociological imagination and what is the main argument of sir it mills in the book power elite the main argument is borrowed from theodor adorno theodor adorno and indirectly by karl marx what he is trying to say that culture industry what is the social function what is the social function in the language of belinowski and Talbot Parsons of culture industry. What is the social function of culture industry? Sir, I will say creation of passive mass society of consumers. Culture industry of late capitalism. culture industry of late capitalism creates a mass society a mass society of passive consumers you know the difference between active and passive Yes or no? What is active society? Active society is that where every social actor takes autonomous decision under the light of his own understanding and natural needs. and what is mass society mass society is non active society or passive society where social actors have become objects from subject it is not you who decide what what to buy it is the culture industry and its powerful propaganda through advertisements through modeling through cinema through television imaginary cinematic imaginary and television imaginary or social media imaginary they create powerful they create powerful impulses in you therefore what is your need food but what is the difference between your type of food and your mother's type of food or grandmother's type of food what satisfied you the most in your grandmother's generation rice pulses vegetables mutton fish cooked at home were called delicacy in your generation it is pizza it is burger it is uh, tend to keep fried chicken it is not cigarette or bidi smack brown sugar these are not 
natural needs of global youth rather these are artificial needs created by the culture industry through powerful imaginary in the form of advertisements in the form of ideal dress which the heroine or the hero in popular television shows or cinema dress up with are you getting my point or not getting my point but it is not limited now in 21st century to only the mass society of passive consumers rather today even the sovereign nation the states are victim how what is online education it is natural or artificial tell me corona pandemic which is not a natural pandemic or disease corona virus has been manufactured in the factory in the laboratory where in a place called wuhan in china but who supplied the technique of producing virus united states of america in the case you are aware netizens of global village recently there are secret papers of dr fauci the medical advisor of american president his correspondence with the wuhan lab the money was given by dr fauci the technique was given by dr fauci who is the victim everybody is a victim now you cannot say that china is not a victim you cannot say that united states is not a victim who is the beneficiary the small group of very powerful multinational corporations they are the beneficiary and everybody else is a victim what does it mean the nation the state has become powerless gone are the days of modernization modernization was driven by entrepreneurial nation states entrepreneurial nation states now who rules the world a few chief executives of the multinational company are you getting the point therefore these are two major domain assumptions culture as a language and culture as a process of a spreading culture among the masses among the working class among the misdirected youth called hippies are you getting the point it seems that you operate the mobile but actually it is mobile which is operating you this is a theme which was developed for the first time by two people one was marshal mcluhan he wrote a very famous book understanding media 
to understand popular culture. Understanding media to understand the popular culture of the global village. And second was, uh, uh, you know, he was a uh, heat American, Marshall McLuhan, a French uh, philosopher and sociologist, Paul Virilio. He wrote a book, Open Sky, to understand the postmodern culture of 21st century 